coming to you from the M&M Exterior Studio in Nooksville, Virginia, this is Flushing It Out with Samantha Spittle, the introvert's extrovert. She talks to people so you don't have to. For now. You know what's crazy is my boyfriend doesn't know exactly how much weight I've lost. He's just lost 60 pounds, and he was beautiful. He's beautiful at any age, yeah. any weight. Um, but so when he lets us, he's going to be like, what the heck? I mean, you can tell. I mean. Okay. <laughs> so this is the after show. So if there's anything you don't want yeah. recorded, let me know. But so we'll plan this yeah. like a little fun yeah. little after show. Yeah. Okay. So I've been wondering like how, what the context of the story will be. <laughs> Um, Because I've had this story inside of me for a while. So you mentioned like, oh, you don't want to tell them the number, which I totally get. Because yeah. I've lost a lot of weight and yeah. gained it back and yeah. whatnot. So, okay. So, um, so I've realized about 10 years ago uh-huh. about how my mind and body and weight and how it's all connected, connected and mm-hmm. but that disconnected and all that. So... You said, okay, I've lost 108 pounds. He doesn't know the number. Nope. But he, but you met him along the point in your journey, but mm-hmm. not at the end, in nope. the middle, right? Right. I Yeah, I had lost 51.4 yeah. pounds. Now, has he seen pictures of you? Oh, well, yeah. I mean... From your heaviest or... I, I, there are some on Facebook. I mean, so it's he could, he's, Yes. So, so he, he, he could see it. Yes. So I don't know if you really realize, Heather, you've really lost 100 pounds. I don't, I don't realize. I don't think that he that knows. This, well, what's so much. funny <laughs> is that, one, we give more value to the number yes. than it is. Because, like, okay, so you did. Like, right. I gain – I I think I weigh a lot more than I seem like I weigh. And the reason I confidently say that is because when I go to the – when I used to go to the doctor and they have the old school scale yeah. where you have to, like, boop, boop, <laughs> and, like, move it over, <laughs> they would always, like – and in my head, I was yeah. like, oh, you got to go over another 50 for that <laughs> one. Too. And then I, they'd always, and I, you know what? They were probably just being nice. They mm-hmm. probably knew, but mm-hmm. it made me feel like I yeah. look heavier than I am, but who knows? Okay. The whole point is a few years, well, 10 years ago, Yeah, I got a gift card for Christmas and I needed clothes. I had yeah. made it known that like I need clothes and whatnot. Yeah. And so. Cause um, you had lost a bunch of weight. No, no, no. This oh. is before I lost weight. Oh. I had, I had, um just moved here and was working more and needed some more work clothes. And so, um, got a gift card, super excited to get a gift card for clothes. I open it up and my world turned into slow motion and I opened the card and it said, Lane (gasps) Bryan. And I like, it was like, I I didn't even want to show anyone. And, and, um, my friend was there and she was like, what, what did you, what did you get? What did you get? you would have thought it was like drug paraphernalia. I was like, oh my gosh, don't show, don't show. And I'm like, how did she know? How did she know I shop at Lane Bryant? I never told me when I shop at Lane Bryant. Because apparently, even though I'm like, oh, I'm really insecure about my weight and I'm real self-conscious. But yet, until I saw the gift card, it's like, I would have thought no one knows I have a weight problem. <laughs> like, it's a secret. It's a secret that I'm carrying around all this extra weight yep. and people just don't know. Mm-hmm. And I felt like... Lane Bryant, my secrets out. Yeah. And then I was like, I was like, one, thank you that she got me that card because yeah. she would have gotten it to me to like express or something. Yeah. I wouldn't have been able to buy anything. Yeah. And so instead of being like grateful that, oh, she put two and two together. Yeah. I hit it like it was the plague, you know, and <laughs> couldn't even mention it was like heroin. where it was from. Yes. Like, <laughs> Um, yeah, no, so that's I've when totally I realized. Been there. Yeah. Yes. So it's funny how like yes. we're like, oh, I don't want you to know my number. I have another friend we were talking about weight and yeah. how don't like to tell husbands weights and, yeah. you know, and so she had confided that she recently shared with him her weight and, mm. you know, it was like a big, you know, it's like a lot, like a big <laughs> yeah. mental thing. Yeah. And his reaction was like, yeah. So like, yeah, like they don't care. And mm-hmm. it's like, I see you <laughs> like, so, right. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, I know how much yeah. I weigh. I, I see yeah. your body, like mm-hmm. whatever. Like we get so hung up on it. Totally. And I'm now lower than I was when I got married. Mm. So I'm like, and I can shop in regular stores again. Yes. I don't really remember when I was, when yeah. I got married, I was able to yeah. shop at like the gap yeah. or whatever, like in a regular, a regular yes. store, but it's a but big deal. That's something that if you're listening to this and you don't relate to it, yeah. then I can't, yeah. then 
yeah. enjoy this perspective. But if mm-hmm. you get this, you're like, yes, that yes. is a big deal. Yeah. And even last night I was ordering um, a new robe mm-hmm. because I ruined my other one. And I'm like looking at the sizes and I'm like, um, I don't know which size to order because I, I'm hung. I'm like, um, I don't know. And I yeah. went with the bigger size yeah. and I'm like, why? And this morning I'm like, yes. why would you do that? Why? Yes. But but a big part of it, I think, is it's the whole mental thing. Yes. And I think that's probably, I don't know if you're doing this through scale of limit, but like, it's the mind shift. You have mm-hmm. to get out of your mind that I think, um, it, I can only speak for myself, yeah. but you know, I think I have kind of said, oh, I am this person. Yes. You know, this, this weight, this mm-hmm. size, like, yeah, it is part of who I am. Mm-hmm. And it's not, it's, yeah. you know, and I, I think a lot about it. And I, I realize over the years that, oh, other people don't. They're not as concerned about my weight, no. you know, or I get self-conscious and it's like, um, if people aren't going to like her joke was so much, fu- her, it would have been so much funnier if she were 20 pounds less. Right. And you know, I had friends that were like my heavy friends and then they got it, something shifted when I lost the weight and it's yeah. so sad. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. So I, um, I lost weight in high school and, um, a woman who worked with my dad had said something to me about that, that she's and you know, I was glad she shared her wisdom, but it was that your relationships with people could change when mm-hmm. you lose weight. And I don't think it's necessarily the weight thing now that I'm older and have yeah. different perspective and look at the big picture of things like, right. it's not the weight, it's Mm-mm. the mind shift you have. Yes. And it's kind of like when you, if you are a pity party person who sits around and has pity parties and you start to change your mind shift. So it might have nothing to do with your weight, but Mm-hmm. With, especially with the way you're, you've done it because it is a mind shift thing. Yes. It's like, you don't want to sit around and complain anymore. Nope. And that is like, hey, misery loves company. And I'm not saying right. anyone's miserable, but just using Agreed. that, Agreed. that term, but it's like, you, you want to have the shared experience. Mm-hmm. And so you don't want negativity in your life anymore yeah. at all, on, at all costs. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know what? I, I appreciate what you're saying, mm-hmm. but I'm in a different place now and I don't really enjoy that anymore. Yeah. So I'm it's really, hard. I'm it's sorry, hard. but not really. Yeah. Sorry, not sorry. sorry because when you sorry. talk about negative things, bad things happen. Yes. When you talk about good, positive things, the energy yes. keeps you in a better place. Mm-hmm. So true. You attract more yes. good things. Yes. Honey, you have any questions, insight? I got a, I got a few things oh, written man, down. That's, that's, you sound so loud. I'm sorry. Um, what was I going to say about you? With oh, what is the term for long term for maintenance? Once you fit, like you know, so are maintenance. You, are you still in lose mode? I am right now. And then, how do you see yourself with long term success? So here's a question for so maintenance. You're going to eat these foods. Da da da. Yeah. So my life because my weight fluctuates, I can kind of say, oh, this happened. This is kind of, I thought I was on the plan. I thought I, and not, Mm -hmm. and not a specific plan, but just, you know, I've gone through the food journals and find what works for me and stuff like that. But I think that there's some emotional triggers I need to still deal with because when certain life stress, you know, health, things like that kind of got me out of whack. Mm -hmm. And so once again, it's a learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. Every setback is a setup for a comeback. You're welcome, everyone. You're welcome. Take that. Say that, that again. again. Um, so every setback is a setup for a comeback. You're welcome. Um, so I feel like for me personally, okay, okay, these are some areas I still need to work on. Mm-hmm. So being on the journey you've been on. Yes. Having life experience, having relationship changes. What are some things to protect yourself for emotional triggers in the future? I think – Really being honest with yourself a hundred percent of the time mm. and knowing that, oh. and knowing that, that whatever you want to eat, like mine is food related and sugar related. It really is. I know. It's, I know. it's not worth it. I mean, for special holidays or special occasions. Yes. Yeah. But you, I have to get right back on the horse as soon as I'm back in my normal environment. If I'm on vacation, mm-hmm. I'd say, you know, more, of, you know, more, more of a chance to splurge and I mm-hmm. deserve this. I've been working so hard, but as soon as Sunday rolls around, I've got to get back on the horse. I've got to go to Wegmans and I've got to meal plan mm-hmm. and make all of my food and put it in my containers and put them in the refrigerator yes. so that when I'm hungry at 11 a.m. on Monday morning mm-hmm. and, you know, I'm coming down from the sugar detox or whatever bad thing I've eaten or alcohol I've drank or whatever it is. 
there's no excuses. Mm. Oh, I'm not prepared. No excuses, yeah. Why? Because then it that turns into more bad choices. And then before you know it, 10 pounds is back. Or I 20, wind up 30, on the, uh, I'll yeah. start tomorrow. I'll yes. start tomorrow. That's, that's what, yeah. that's where I trip up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and it's so much easier for men to lose weight. Yeah. I mean, I know that's a stereotype, but it's true. It's true. Yeah. It is true. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jeremy, like, true. makes a little change, and he's like, oh, I'm down 10 pounds. Yes. I'm like, I made a change, and I'm up a pound. So <laughs> what? Um, it's muscle. It's muscle. It's yeah, muscle. exactly. Um, what is it about the meditation and mind? What's the mind shift, mindset shift? What does that look like to you? Okay. So my meditation and affirmation, my daily affirmations Mm -hmm. is telling yourself, you know, um, how you're worthy of making good choices, how you're worthy to eat good foods. You're worthy not to have negativity in your life. You are Mm -hmm. just worthy on all the positive aspects in your life and you deserve greatness. Mm. Do you set a time to do that? Try to do it in the morning. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Before any, you know, before I'm talking to anyone or, um, I do meditation for at least five minutes in the morning, you know, I turn my phone off and has, do you have alarm. anything like, do you have a guided meditation or are you just nice silence? Oh, nice silence. Okay. I need total silence. I can't even have music on or else yeah. my mind starts to wander yes. and that's okay too, because not mm-hmm. every day you can meditate properly. Mm-hmm. Um, but even just taking the five or two minutes to yourself, mm-hmm. I mean, two minutes can set, seem like an hour. Yeah. Well, at least it does for me because mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff going on in my head. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, Heather, you got this, the, you know, meditation of you can do this. You are awesome. Don't let any negativity hold you back. Did it, is it, so was the scale the limit um, format help? Did that help you with the mindset shift? Yes, because I have a lot of food triggers from my past. And mm. being young and being, you know, I was always the tallest one in my class. You know, I'm 5'10", mm-hmm. and I was always in the center back row. And, like, I would, my grandmother would say, you know, are you sure you really want to eat that? Or I'd, she'd put me on the scale, and, you know, I'd be like, you know, 5'8 and 140. And she's like, I weigh 150. You're only 10 pounds less than me, and you're 10 years old, oh, you know. Oh, gosh. But that was the different mentality. Yes. Not that she did anything wrong. It's yeah. just what she didn't want me to have those struggles but, you know, since I was 10, I was told that I was heavy and I really wasn't. And I'm no. like, I was just tall and big and yep. growing into something. And yeah, my, but it, but it planted the seeds yes, that you are heavy. So yes. then you just become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Exactly. You that manifest you are heavy. that you're heavy. Mm-hmm. 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 And even when you think that you're heavy, like when you look back at, you know, oh. pictures of yourself, when you were like in high school and you thought you were this Amazon woman and mm-hmm. you're like, damn, what I wouldn't give to be that size 10 again. Mm-hmm again, which is in fact my goal um, now. And I'm almost there. Um, oh, that's great. <laughs> but, How are you? But yeah. Great. So just really got to be love, loving to yourself and mm-hmm. kind to yourself. And was your self-talk before you started really negative? Oh, it was terrible. Mm. My self-talk was awful. And I'm sure, you know, like mm-hmm. so many people tell me, if you only knew what I said to myself, mm-hmm. you'd be like, oh, my gosh. It's a, you know, and they say, if you talk to a friend the way you talk to yourself, you know, and oh. I think saying it out loud is powerful. Yes. Yes. Like, in, get it, hear yourself saying it to yourself. Yes. You're yes. like, oh, dang, that right. sounded really harsh. It did. And it would. And if you are in a toxic relationship and you have negative self-talk coming from that other person, like, I'm going to teach you a lesson or that, that was wrong, Heather. Or, you know, why would you think that? Or you're a bad mother or whatever that negative person said to you. You start to believe it. You're mm-hmm. like, oh my God. I, and no one I, talks about it too. So I appreciate you being willing to talk about a toxic relationship because yes. it's a delicate subject. It's hard for people to talk about. Yes. But when you're in a toxic relationship, yes. you don't know any, you don't necessarily, I can't speak but for people, but just from, you know, walking alongside people is you don't know any different. It's right. like, that's your reality. Isn't that yes. normal? Yeah. And even if you know it's not in other people's relationship, it's like what I've seen is it's like, well, they... I, they're not as bad as me. You know, I, right. like, I kind of, I deserve this talk, you know, yes. so I know it's not good, but I deserve it. And it's like, no, well, no one deserves to be talked to like that. Or you that. feel that you're not worthy to be talked to any better. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was in a very toxic marriage for 16 years. We were together 16 years, married for uh, 12, mm-hmm. almost 13. Um, 
and I was told such terrible things about myself. And the, I think truly the physical abuse is terrible, Mm -hmm. but the mental abuse is even more crushing to your soul. And just, you feel like you're like going in quicksand and you're trying to dig out of this terrible Mm -hmm. place. And it's so hard. And when you pray for help and it finally comes and you finally have the courage to leave this toxicity of this terrible relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, you don't, if you, and one of my girlfriends said to me, would you want your children to be in this relationship? Mm. Hell no. Mm. So why are you in this relationship? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't, I was afraid to leave. I was afraid. I was so afraid. Of course. Yeah. And thank God I took a chance. I'm grateful. And I'm grateful that you're sharing, like I said, because it's not talked about. And I know that, you know, whether it's society norms, um, judgment, religious judgment, you know, anything mm-hmm. where it's like, you don't, you know, you want to do what you think is right, but I'm just, I'm kind of an advocate for yeah. abuse. Like I do not want people to be in toxic situations. You're and I don't against know. abuse. Yeah. Did I say I was for, you said something? you're an advocate. For I'm an advocate. Abuse. No, I am an advocate <laughs> for healthy relationships. I, yeah. Yes. Like, cause it breaks my heart because it's something that people don't open up about. Right. And, um, you know, why with like this podcast, you know, if, if people listen and things like that, it's like you, until you hear someone share their story mm-hmm. and then you can see yourself in their shoes, mm-hmm. that might be the thing that yeah. helps someone take a step. Yes. And I'm willing to go really deep into mm-hmm. that because mm. I'd have no shame. I, you know, I think mm. that the truth matters and if it can help one person leave their toxic relationship, that's mm. worth it for me. What's something you would share then that people don't talk about that you would be willing to share about a toxic relationship? That's a big question, but if God, I'm running through all the abuse in my head right now. Mm. That it's not okay to treat someone that poorly. It's not okay to yell at somebody and tell them what a terrible person they are. Mm. Even if you are angry when it's over and over and over and over again, mm-hmm. or telling someone that you are a fat bitch Mm. and you know and so uh, this happened to me on multiple occasions in my marriage and one morning i woke up and was like you know what i'm going to go for a walk before my son wakes up Mm -hmm. before my husband wakes up and i'm going to do something for myself so i purposely set the alarm and i got up at six went out the door came back at seven and then i'm greeted with a crying son and a raging angry husband who is so furious that I have interrupted his sleep and how dare I not be there for our son. And it's a Saturday morning. And so I'm going to teach you a lesson of how not to, you know, how you need, you have a priority and you need to take care of your son first and foremost, and you weren't there and you're a terrible mother. Mm. So I'm going to beat it out of you that you are a terrible person. And how dare you? So sorry, Heather. And I don't mean to, I don't, I hate. Yeah. Maybe that was way too much information, no, but it I happens. appreciate it. No. And that's why, you know, I only apologize because it's one of those things that I don't want to ask a question lighthearted, you know, yeah. Hey, let just take me back there right. because this effing sucks and I'm yeah. sorry yeah. and I hate it. Yeah. But you, you, you know, he's calling me these terrible things and he throws his hands around my neck and was like strangling me. And I knew, I knew that he couldn't hold me up against the closet door if I lifted up my feet because I was too heavy. And so I lifted my feet up and I was able to save my life. And it's things like that, that, you know, when your neighbors come and knock on your door, you know, because they hear the screaming and the yelling and they, they're like, is everything okay? And you have a scarf around your neck because you're afraid to tell your police officer neighbors that, you're afraid to call the police because you don't want people to talk. You don't want people mm. to talk about you behind your back. And you want to put up this facade that your life is perfect. And mm. it's not. So you just never know what's going on behind closed doors. Yes. I think that goes back to something you said that I wrote down. Reality has exceeded your expectations. Yeah. And living in the light, mm. sharing all that stuff. 
It's yes. truth. I think it's living in truth. You know what I truth. mean? Like, yes. like yes. the way it's intended to be like marriage. And that's my big thing and why I, I'm not a theologian by any means. But it breaks my heart when people are in toxic relationships and it's, you know, oh, God doesn't want us to get divorced. Like God does not, that is not a marriage. And no. that's why Shannon McGurk, he, he was in one of our episodes and he talked about <clears throat> divorce. I don't know if it actually made it on the episode or not, but we talked about that because, you know, he talked about staying together for marriage for the kids that like, yes, that is a good reason to stay in a marriage. And I got a little like, whoa, but he explained it. He said, not if it's a toxic relationship. I don't know what words he used, right? but it was like music to my ears because he talked about what marriage is. And so, you know, we all have different beliefs and things like that. So you do mm-hmm. works for you, but you know, he was talking about it through a religious lens and, and through like spiritual lens with, and it's like, if you guys, if like each side has to hold up its end of what a marriage is. Yeah. And so God, I've said, God does not want you in an abusive relationship, whether it's physical whether it's verbal, mental, and verbal abuse too. And I'm definitely no expert. I need to have an expert on, but verbal abuse isn't always yelling mean things either. Right. It's manipulation. It's gaslighting yes. and stuff. So, yes. you know, I just, I yes. am like, if you hear yourself, that's why I'm, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing the hard and the bad stuff, because that's the thing that no one can talk about. How do you show up at a, you know, a meeting where everyone's, positive and great day and da, 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 and right. you know you went through what you shared the night before maybe you know yes you just yes. never know you just never know what goes on behind closed doors mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you can put on the white picket fence 2.5 kids mm-hmm. you know but is it really that wonderful in your house it is in my house now mm-hmm. <laughs> because yeah. i won't settle yeah. for anything like that ever again mm-hmm. period the end there are no buts there are no more excuses. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe I just didn't love him enough that day. Maybe, oh my God, I'm a terrible person. I really should have worked out a schedule. I should have just taken my son with me to go for a walk, but he was sleeping too. I didn't yeah. want to disturb anybody. I didn't want to ruin anybody's day. Mm-hmm. I wanted to do something for myself. And how dare I? How dare you? Yeah. Mm. How dare I? Heather, thank you. Thank you for being willing to share because it is, and I'm sorry you had to go through that, but I'm so thankful that you have continued to put one fit in front of the other. Thank you. And make these changes. I'm grateful for every experience I've had truly. Yeah. Cause I wouldn't be where I am today. Well, that's why, I mean, the, what gets me through is that God uses all for good, you know, yes. or, or, you know, that the universe makes all things right, whatever, you know, yeah. but like, I just truly feel that, you know, when bad things happen, I don't think there's an explanation for it. I don't think mm-hmm. it, you know, necessarily had like, you know, but I think it will be made good. And so I'm grateful that, you've done that and then have the ability to share it because you talked about the shame. Yeah. It's like one of the big things that I've talked about with the show is that, you know, how do we talk about things delicately? Because not, we can't all put our, as I, because I curse sometimes when I get passionate. Um, <laughs> Me too, girl. You know, we can't all put our shit out there. You know, there's a fine line between like when to share and how much to share and things like that. And so mm-hmm. when you find people who are willing to share. So if my duty, <laughs> duty you get it duty. um you know if i am meant to erase the shame of shitting your pants so i can introduce myself and <laughs> then that um but and so that people can shake your hand and go you're the girl that crapped your pants that's me nice to meet <laughs> you yeah. um but that's just the surface i have so much more i could share and um but that's the thing that's like a trivial example that's like a total bs example of something that you share that helps start lifting the shame yes but this is you know with what you're willing to share i mean this is the stuff that if no one else talks about it so whether it's something trivial yeah. or something real like this is affecting your your life your life it's affecting your kids your mm-hmm. future generations what's passing so by you be, being willing to do the hard work you are breaking that chain for your family and yes. your kids totally. so thank yes. you for being willing to talk about that yeah. no problem my yeah. pleasure anything else Jer? Well, i think it's worth noting that if anybody is going through anything like that or if those alarms are going off and you're ignoring them Stop ignoring them. And reach out to someone because if you need to talk to someone. Trusted friend. Talk to a trusted friend. And if you don't have one, message me. That's right. Or me. Yeah. And, you know, you just need someone in your corner. So. Totally. But I, you know, it's funny. We talk I on the podcast, like uh, she talks to people so you don't have to for now. Just to reiterate, my goal is that 
my whole goal with this is to spark conversations with people, you know, that you and I would have had lunch and would have talked about this. And I would have picked your brain about Mm -hmm. how the heck this happened. And then getting into, you know, we would have gotten into your past relationships and like, this is, it's like more for me, it's more things in my mind and my heart so that when I meet people in those situations, I'm like, you know, I haven't been through that, but I know people who have. And so I see it and I want to be able to spread this to other people Mm -hmm. so that when they hear it, they can help someone. Or if they hear it in the conversation, they can see themselves. And so my other thing is that if you do have a trusted, if you do have people in your life, Mm -hmm. being willing to open up about those things, being willing to say, hey, this is what's going on, because we don't know what's everything's normal to us, because it's our life. You don't know any different. Mm-hmm. But when you start sharing with people, that's why I think we're called to be in community together. We're called to be in relationship with people because it's through that we help each other and we could be an answer to someone's prayer. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we were talking earlier about toxic relationships yes. and you mentioned something that I wanted to make sure we got in the after show, which is you made the shift. You broke, you know, he, your, your ex from a year ago broke up with you, taught you a lesson and you were like, yeah, no more. So, what happened like after that? Cause he, I think you mentioned before he tried a few days later to get back with you. So what did mm-hmm. that look like when he yes. came back? Like- sure. Okay. Well, Valentine's day, you know, mm-hmm. he breaks up with me and, um, later that, that was at 3 a.m. by the way. Mm-hmm. Oh. 3 a.m. Mm-hmm. Um, well, first of all, I want to be like, I was woken more- up. I was oh. asleep and he woke me up what? to tell me this. Oh, because he was seething. Yes. I bet he, he was seething, seething for mm-hmm. hours. And he's like, I'm done. And I'm like, okay, I'm really tired. And so, <laughs> <laughs> what, so, whatever, man. So, so later that day, I get a letter, an email saying, I wanted to wish you happy Valentine's Day all day, but I felt like it would be a slap in the face and yada, yada, yada. And for a while now, things have seemed, you know, not to be at their best. And, you know, you want one thing and I want another. Okay, fine. And then, so I didn't respond Mm -hmm. to the letter. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. And then the next day, you know, at 5, 11 Mm a.m., I get the phone call, phone call, phone call. I'm not answering the phone on a Saturday morning at 5, 11. And and then at 9 a.m., like, texts are just coming up. Oh. Like crazy. And I was like, what do you want? You broke up with me on Valentine's Day. He's like, I just want to make sure this is really what you wanted. And I'm like, okay. You, and then I reiterated all the many things that he said, why we weren't compatible. Mm-hmm. And he's like, but is this really what you want? I'm like, leave me alone. I never want to hear from you again. Done. Mm-hmm. That's what I want. Yes. Mm-hmm. This is exactly what I want. Mm-hmm. And then, um, <laughs> then, then he breaks into my home. <gasps> Say three, what? Three days later, he breaks into my home because he had the garage code, and I sleep with a sound spa, so the white noise mm-hmm. machine. Yeah. So he gets to the top stairs, and I'm. You were home. I was home. It was. It was. It was a, it was a freaking Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Were your kids home? Okay, thank God. It was a teacher work day the next day, or a holiday, so my daughter wasn't home, and my son was in college. Oh my god. And so. So I like, it's pitch black in my room and I can see the figure standing there in the dark and I didn't know whether or not I was going to be killed, raped, what, I didn't know who this person was. I truly didn't know it was him. And I'm screaming, what the fuck do you want, motherfucker? What is it? Who is it? Who is it? And he comes down and he sits down and then I know it's him, the way the bed like shifts. And I'm like, and I'm like paralyzed. I can't call 911 because I'm like, frozen in terror and I know and no and no and no so I was able to turn the light on and he's like he's and I'm like what the fuck is your problem and he's like you wouldn't answer my phone calls you wouldn't answer anything so I had no other choice you left me no other alternative okay I gotta write that down by the way I'm writing down all (sighs) the red flags I'm seeing because I want to go over them at the end um (laughs) just to really yeah drive them home you can't make this shit up I really should write a book so I'm like I'm like I'm like and he's wasted, by the way. Of course. He's drunk as a skunk, driven from Springfield to my house in Gainesville. And so I'm like, shit, damn. Mm-hmm. I really don't want to send him out drunk, mm-hmm. even though I'm so angry. And how mm-hmm. the, you just scared the bejesus out of me. You broke into my home. You broke into my home. And so... I finally get him to leave like within 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then I let, you know, I text his sister or I called her and I... It was like, you know, I, I t- she didn't answer the phone and I texted mm-hmm. her and I said, look, you know, 
this person has just left and he's drunk and he's broken into my home and I'm mm-hmm. terrified now and my life is, you know, hello, he has serious issues. He needs some help. And they're like, oh, my God, why did you let him leave? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, get him back here. And I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Really? Uh, I was actually thinking, um, should have called. I'm not, not saying you should. You sh- I will not make any, but like, but what, what I, I fear is the whole violence thing. Cause no one ever thinks it's going to happen. Right. But then that stuff wouldn't happen. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, and she tells me, change all your passwords, change all your everything, just change it. I'm like, mm-hmm. why? And she's like, just trust me, just change everything. So I changed a couple things. I really wasn't thinking straight. Two days later. He comes in, he breaks into my, I've blocked him on Facebook. I've blocked him on Instagram. I've blocked him on email. I've blocked him mm-hmm. on everything. He broke in and figured out my new passwords and went in and friended, cause I had unfriended him, friended me back on Facebook, friended me back on Instagram. And I'm like, like I wasn't going to find out. So I had to call mm-hmm. his mother and say, this is what your son has just done. This is illegal. You've mm-hmm. now broken, I don't know how many different, you know, laws and you need to get help for him. He's obviously down, falling down the rabbit hole. Something mm-hmm. is wrong. Wow. And then I get flowers and then I get concert tickets mm-hmm. and then I get movie tickets. And I'm like, and, and I haven't spoken, I haven't done. And I did go to the magistrate to, to get a restraining order because, you know, you broke into my house yes. and they're like, there's nothing you can do because he broke into your house and you because get I didn't mystery. give, cause he had moved in and, oh. and for a very short time. And because I didn't give him a, um, uh, a lease to execute the, or to, to leave the house, it doesn't matter. So okay. he, it's still officially his house, even though he's not on my mortgage. He's not like, you know, there's so many different laws. Okay. So is this a tip that people might need? And I don't know if this is legally sound, but Heather, mm-hmm. based on Heather's experience, if someone's in a relationship and they ask someone to move out, should they have it in writing? They then? really should. Okay. That's a good tip. But I wasn't thinking. No, no, broke up with no, no, no. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. girl. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. saying yeah. you share your, yeah. that's why I said, I want to hear how this all went down. Because yes. if you're willing to share it, girl, yeah. let's yes. get it out there yes. because this is the kind of thing you would yeah. never, why never. would you ever think of this? Why would I make up a lease and tell him to get to remove their yes. premises if he's broken up with me and his But this out. is the kind of stuff that when you hear on a random yeah. podcast yeah. and your girlfriend goes through this or you go yeah. through this. This isn't a random podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best damn podcast out there. That's true. Thank right, you. Right, Thank right, you. right, 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 um, right. This is the thing. I want someone to hear it because God forbid they yeah. have a friend or they're in this situation. Like, yeah. Cover your bases. So cover that's, your bases. learn from this. Uh, yeah. um, and what did he say? So he sent you... Um, and concert tickets and flowers. And what did the notes in that say? Were they angry? Were they happy? Well, well the first one on Valentine's Day was very about how we should be together. Yeah. Then the next morning at 511 when he's calling me and I didn't answer the phone and he's texting me, is this really what you want? Da, mm-hmm. da, 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 da. And I'm like, mm, and I reiterated the letter. And yeah. it was like, well, you said this and this, this is terrible and this isn't going to happen. And you want this, this and this. And you feel I'm in a different, and a, a ring was, oh, he had taken me to go get an engagement ring in August 1st. Oh. And he had like, he was like, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, you know, and I'm thinking every day, am I, am I worthy for the ring today? Am I worthy for the ring? Like he's manipulated oh, me to, think, oh, so. to like think, you know, one way mm. and it never came. And I was like, also done. Like, mm-hmm. why are you holding this? Why are you dangling this carrot over mm-hmm. this carrot ring <laughs> uh-huh. um, <laughs> um, over me? I like that. I'm not worthy. And when I'm, you know, whipped into shape and when I'm taught a lesson, then I'll be worthy, whatever. Mm-hmm. So. But when he, when the tickets came, they were yes. like nicer messages, right? Like, oh, like so nothing, amazing. nothing would make me happier if you would accompany me to this, mm. this concert. And there's no other person in the world. I'd rather be by my side. You know, we can just go as friends. And I also, I know I owe you a trip to Cancun that I'd given you. Th- you know, three Christmases ago on a piece of paper that said we're going to go to Cancun sometime <laughs> in the future. And I, and I wanted to so desperately see you at the coffee shop and just, we can be friends. Like, did you ever write back? You broke in to my house <laughs> and scared the shit out of me. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, I let his mother know and mm-hmm. his sister know. And I, yeah, I think I did say, I think I did text, you know, but you lost your mind. I was, but that's what's scary yeah. is you, he I did. Thought, I, I thought you were going to kill me. I didn't know who yeah. you were. Yeah. I. You could have had a gun. You could have had a knife. Chop yes. me up in little pieces. You know, yeah. thank God my daughter wasn't home because I screamed. Yes. Or at least I tried to scream like I've never screamed. But you have no voice at yes. that when you're that scared and terrified. Yes. But that's the thing, like. Yeah. 
but it he is knew scary. I was upset. Yes, yeah. but but that's what's scary is that when when the people do like I have there's a good like joke and I don't mean to make light of it and mm-hmm. I feel the more I learn about life, oh, I can't even like I have a policy, no dateline shit. Like yeah. anything you see on dateline, don't do it. Yeah. But I think that's why I have such a passion for this because everyone thinks, oh no, not this situation. It, that wouldn't ever happen. But the thing is that stuff on Dateline wouldn't mm-hmm. be there if it wasn't happening in everyday life for people. Yes. And no one, if people thought that someone was capable of doing something right. bad, nothing bad would happen because you would lock it up. They, you'd get the restraining order. You'd do this or this, but you never do. And so it goes back to like, I'm even in my head, like, oh my gosh, are we really going to share this? Is, is, are we, are we, um, talking about this delicately? Is it triggering, you know, all these thoughts in my head, but it, I just keep going back to like, this stuff needs to be shared because you, no one talks about it. You don't hear right. someone that, and you don't, if you, if you're in that situation, you're not necessarily seeking, you, you know, I think eventually just based on my friends, it's like, I do think you get to a point where you kind of seek out, is this normal? Yeah. Um, but the things he said that it was like teaching, if someone needs to teach you a lesson, mm-hmm. flipping it around on this is what you wanted, oh, yes. making it about you. So then you want to come back like, oh, no, 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 it's not what I wanted. Mm-hmm. And I had no other choice. Mm-hmm. And then, yep. of course, eventually getting, you know, lovey-dovey, happy, treating you like you deserve to be treated. Like I was done. Just I'm... And he had done this multiple times. Exa- well, that's, exactly. Yeah. It's the cycle. Yeah. And my... Marriage was this way too. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I'm not an expert. I'm far from it. I'm nothing, but just based on what I've Googled, um, is I believe it's part of the cycle of abuse. I feel like it's worth plugging Malcolm Gladwell's book, talking to strangers. Yeah. Well, (laughs) yeah. Talking to strangers is more how interactions with people get, um, misinterpreted. But what stood out for me when I read that book, when it comes to manipulative people, Mm -hmm. is that we default to truth with people. So when something happens, you think, well, this is just a one-time thing. They were just really tired. Or, you know, like if he just drank too much that night, this isn't, this isn't the norm. And I mean, Malcolm Gladwell in his book, it's like kind of a broader thing. Yeah. But it talks about, but it makes sense how we can see something and then just kind of explain it away because we right. want to believe good. And that's actually how we function in society is we do believe people are, mm-hmm. you know, that what we see is what we get, but um, it takes a certain amount of, I guess you could say evidence to finally see that, Oh, this isn't a good situation or this person is lying. Yeah. Um, and he talked about the Bernie Madoff scandal and something and, and Jerry Sandusky. Those were the two things he used, how ever there was so much evidence against these people, but that, each it only looked like so much evidence when it was all put together, right? Because each individual it wasn't, and so mm-hmm. um, I mean I think abusive situations are different, mm-hmm. but it's that it's but it's the person, and if you're the only one having that experience with that person, mm-hmm. I think you belittle your own inter- interaction with them. You think, oh, it's just me, mm-hmm. I deserve this, yada yada. Right. But then you know when you see a pattern of behavior, yes, it changes. And his sister said. You need to go change all your passwords. Don't ask me any questions. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, man, thank you. Oh, you're thank welcome. you. Thank you. Cause you know, this is just, it's a heavy topic and I never want to make light of it, but I am so, it is so heavy on my heart because like I said, I feel like the premise of the show is silly Mm-hmm. But it's, I just think that when you, if you're willing to, to go places and I've said before, you know, if you're willing to go into the cracks, um, just, you got to go there because yeah. that's, you know, you can help somebody else mm-hmm. yeah. being willing to share your story. If you, if you're able to, well, thank you, Heather. Thank you so much thank for your you. time. Thank you for your heart. And, um, thank you for all the tips too. You are welcome. My pleasure. And that's a wrap for now. Thanks for listening to Flushing It Out with Samantha Spittle. Music provided by TwinMusicom.org. Song titled Night at the Dance Hall. Sound editing by me, Jeremy Spittle. 
A special thanks to our studio sponsor, M&M Exteriors. Visit their website at mmexteriors.com for all of your roofing, siding, and gutter needs in the Northern Virginia area. Visit our website at flushingitout.com and be sure to subscribe. This has been a Spitfire production. That was the greatest thing I've ever heard.